This is part two on a three-part series about spinnerbaits. In this video, I will discuss the exact science as to why fishes slam spinnerbaits. Every fisher person should have a fundamental understanding of what is in this video, no matter what kind of fishing they do. If you didn't get a chance to see part one, that video introduces the spinnerbait, describing the basic components and how they create flash, thump, and it offers other great tips. Links are in the description below. And in part three, I will share a few great methods for playing spinnerbaits. I'll explain how this jingly chunk of metal that looks nothing like a natural fish or prey item works to attract fish. So even if you don't fish, this is the how it works spinnerbaits. It's very interesting. Stick around. Be sure to like the video to bookmark it in your liked videos for future reference. Share the video with your buddies who might find this video informative and helpful. And also subscribe. It's, it's free. Why not? Why would a fish want a spinnerbait? Seriously, why would a fish want a chunk of lead, jingling metal, and non-natural looking silicone that looks nothing like any natural prey item? I used to ask myself this too until I learned about fishes and their mechanoreception, the lateral line and hearing, and visual reception capabilities. Motion. Motion is the key to a spinnerbait's magic. A suspended spinnerbait just dangling in the water column would not do much to entice a fish to hit. Except, of course, that curious bluegill needing to pick at it to see if it's edible. A spinnerbait in motion takes on a completely new visual and auditory appearance than that of a still one. Think of a ceiling fan. As the fan's blades are spinning, it almost appears as if a whole semi-transparent circle has formed on the ceiling instead of five or so individual blades. The rotating blades are also vibrating the rest of the spinnerbait. The wire arms, the body, and the attached skirt are all in fast motion. Therefore, those individual silicone strands do not appear as a bunch of single elongated pieces, but as of a semi-transparent whole body of colors and flare. Put the pieces together and what do you get? The main theory is that the blades, shining and fluttering, resemble bait fish that are being chased by a larger predatory fish, which is the expressed profile of the body and skirt. How fishes see your lure. So, how do fishes actually see the bait? And can fishes see in color? The short answer to both of those questions is that fishes see much the same way that we do, and most can see in color. Remember, the fishes are vertebrates just like us. Fishes have two types of sensory cells in their eyes, rods and cones. Rods are sensitive to lower levels of light, offering low temporal and spatial resolution, and are more prominent in deep water fishes. Cones are sensitive to high levels of light and provide high temporal and spatial resolution. Most inland fishes are exposed to high light conditions and have varying types of cones. These cones are how they see color. So when you are weighing out your skirt options, keep in mind that color does matter. The general rule of thumb is bright skirts for bright days and dark skirts for dark days. This may seem counterintuitive, but it has its reasoning. Think about how water absorbs light. As the light penetrates deeper into the water, the larger low energy red-orange wavelengths are absorbed first then the wavelengths corresponding to yellow, green, blue, etc. In turbid or deep water, a red or orange spinnerbait will be absorbing more light rather than reflecting it compared to a green or blue spinnerbait. Basically, think about a redfish and a bluefish at some depth where the long red wavelengths of light have been almost entirely absorbed. The bluefish is reflecting blue wavelengths that have not been absorbed by the water, while the redfish is almost not visible as it absorbs the remaining high energy, short wavelength light and appears almost a shade of black. The same holds true for a blue and red spinnerbait at the same depth. I believe chartreuse spinnerbaits are a great middle ground option between bright days with clear water and somewhat overcast days with semi-turbid water 
as they are emitting an intermediary spectrum of wavelengths between the long wavelength reds and the short wavelength blues. When in doubt, go chartreuse. But always be willing to adjust colors and types if one presentation is failing. How fishes feel your lure. This is crucial information for any fisher person fishing for any fish species with any type of bait. Most anglers are not professionals or even biologists, so I will make the technical not that technical and share information that will make you a better fisher person. Mechanoreception, the lateral line and hearing. The lateral line, this is a term that should sound somewhat familiar as it is often mentioned in popular fishing magazines and among the optimistic chatter within social bait shops. And if the lateral line is not familiar, that's okay. But what exactly is the lateral line? Simply put, the lateral line is a sensory system in fishes that detects vibrations formed by displaced water. This is how fishes feel their aquatic world. The lateral line contains a bunch of sensory hair cells within neuromasts. These neuromasts can be freestanding on the skin or embedded within channels both along the body and within dermal bones of the head. As water flows across a neuromast, the cilia, or itty bitty hairs, within the neuromast will move with the direction of the current. This movement of hairs will cause a decrease or increase of action potentials, varying the nerve impulses sent to the brain. The brain interprets the impulses and sends reactionary impulses to the muscles. So when your spinnerbait begins to approach a sitting fish, the vibrations being generated by the spinner's blades are displacing water, sending pressure waves towards that fish. These pressure waves are moving water towards that sitting fish which are characteristically different compared to the water immediately surrounding the fish. The lure's pressure waves are detected by the lateral line system. All those neuromasts, the hairs within the neuromasts alter the frequencies of action potentials being sent to the brain. And BAM! That fish's natural instincts will kick in, causing it to react to your spinnerbait. Simple enough, eh? Hearing. Fishes do have ears. They are set beneath in the dermal or skin tissue within the cranial or head bones. The lateral line system is detecting low frequency pressure waves, usually beneath 100 Hz or so, while the inner ear in fishes is detecting higher frequency pressure waves. Often we call pressure waves that pertain to hearing as sound waves. Most fishes do not detect sound above 500 to 800 hertz, but there are some species, like the American Shad, that can detect ultrasonic signals up to 180 kilohertz. Chambers within the inner ear contain otoliths, which are calcium carbonate deposits, also known as ear stones. These ear stones rest on sensory hair cells, similar to those in neural mass of the lateral line system. When your spinnerbait is traveling through the water, not only is it creating those low frequency pressure waves that are being detected by the lateral line system, but also pressure waves of a higher frequency that are being detected by the inner ear. As the dermal tissue of fishes is of a similar density to the surrounding water, this makes the tissue transparent to sound. Or in other words, sound travels easily through skin tissue without being distorted. The ear stones vibrate as the sound waves hit them, causing the hairs that the stones are resting upon to move, causing electrical impulses of differing frequencies to be sent to the brain, saying, hey, there is something making noise that may be edible. Different spinnerbaits produce different sound waves, just as one person's voice differs from another. A great tip, fishes can experience hearing loss. This occurs in noisy waters, where there's lots of boat traffic, seismic blasting, etc. So sometimes it may be advantageous to use an obnoxious spinnerbait. 
that is, one producing lots of sound waves at high intensity or amplitude, like turning your stereo to full blast, and a lure with lots of flash. Electroreception is also another sensory system in many types of fishes, such as sharks and rays, which fishes use electrical impulses to feel their world. And then there's magnetic reception, as well as chemoreception, but this is all a discussion for another day. Thanks for watching part two on this three-part series. Uh, be sure to like it, share it, subscribe, it's free. Uh, remember, part one covers what the spinnerbait is, creates flash thump, all that wonderful stuff that you should know. Part three will show some uh, demonstrations on how to use your spinnerbaits. Keep loving the beautiful chaos of nature. Mmm, rico.